Wormwood, I've seen your tweets about guiding your patient's reading and making sure that he sees a lot of his atheist friend. But are you not being a bit naive? It sounds as though you suppose that argument is the way to keep him out of the enemy's clutches. Perhaps if he had lived a few centuries earlier... At that time, the humans still knew pretty much when a thing was proven and when it wasn't. And if it was proven, they really believed it. They still connected thinking with doing, and were willing to change their lifestyle as the result of a chain of reasoning. But with the 24-hour news cycle and other such inventions, we have largely altered that. Your man has been accustomed, ever since he was a boy, to having a dozen incompatible philosophies dancing about inside his head. He doesn't think of doctrines primarily as true or false, but as academic or practical, uh, outdated or contemporary, conservative or liberal. Jargon, and not argument, is your best ally in keeping him from the church. Don't waste time trying to make him think materialism is true. Make him think it is strong, or stark, or courageous. That it is the philosophy of the future. That's the sort of thing he cares about. The trouble with argument is that it moves the whole struggle onto the enemy's own ground. He can argue too. But with really practical propaganda, like I am suggesting, he has been proven for centuries to be greatly the inferior of our father below. Just by arguing, you're making him think. And once he's thinking, where will it go next? Even if you can twist his train of thought so that it eventually goes in our favor, you will have been promoting in him the fatal habit of thinking about universal issues and taking his attention away from his immediate stream of sense experiences. Your job is to fix his attention on that stream. Teach him to call it real life. And don't let him ask what he means by real. Remember, he is not, like you, a pure spirit. Having never been a human, you don't realize how enslaved they are to the pressures of the ordinary. I once had a patient who was a sound atheist and would read often in the museum. One day, as he was reading, I saw a train of thought beginning to go the wrong way, and the enemy was on him in a moment. Before I knew where I was, I saw my twenty years of work beginning to totter. If I had lost my head and tried a defense by argument, I would have been undone. But I was not such a fool. I struck immediately at the part of the man I had best under my control, and suggested it was just about time that he had some lunch. The enemy presumably made the counter-suggestion that this was more important than lunch. At least, I think that was his line. For when I said, quite, Far too important to tackle at the end of a morning, the patient brightened up considerably, and by the time I had added, better to come back to it with a fresh mind later, he was already halfway to the door. Once he was in the street, the battle was won. I showed him a video advertisement for shoes and a bus going past, and by the time he had got to the bottom of the steps, I had him in the unalterable conviction that no matter what strange ideas come into a man's mind while he's shut up alone with his books, a healthy dose of real life is enough to show him that all that sort of thing just couldn't be true. He knew he'd had a narrow escape, and in later years was fond of talking about that inarticulate sense for actuality which is our greatest safeguard against aberrations of mere logic. He is now safe in our father's house. Do you see? Thanks to processes which we set at work in them centuries ago, they find it all but impossible to think of the unfamiliar while the familiar is right in front of them. Keep pressing home on him the ordinariness of things. Above all, do not try to use sciences such as physics or chemistry as a defense against Christianity. They will positively encourage him to think about things he can't touch and see. There have been sad cases among modern physicists. If he has to dabble in science, let it be economics or sociology. Don't let him get away from that invaluable real life. But best of all is to let him read no science at all, but to give him the grandiose idea that he already knows everything, because he's picked it up through casual talk and reading, and it is all the results of modern investigation. Please remember that you are there to confuse him. From the way some of you young fiends talk, one would think it was our job to teach. 